Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Pair Project. My name is Eve Abraha, and I'm a senior at Tufts University studying biology and education. In this video, we will build on the baseline knowledge you have of what bacteria, antibiotics, and antibiotic resistance are, and discuss how antibiotic resistance genes and bacteria move through the environments and into our bodies. If you haven't watched my earlier video, Understanding Antibiotics and Antimicrobial Resistance, you may want to do that first. In today's video, we will think about spread of resistance from two perspectives, at the organism level in which bacteria are spread through water, food, soil, and animals, and at the molecular level, DNA molecules coding resistance genes. We will review how antibiotic use and overuse leads to selection pressure for resistant bacteria. Then we will talk about how a One Health context helps us to understand why environmental spread of resistant bacteria is a public health threat. By the end of this video, we hope you better understand why it is important to study antimicrobial resistance in the environment. With that, let's begin. So bacteria can spread through countless routes. This slide illustrates just a few ways in which bacteria spread because of our connection to animals and to the environment. We know that bacteria are transferred from animals to humans through handling or from eating contaminated foods. In areas where sanitation is poor, water can become contaminated as well. So exposure to bacteria is generally not a problem. We are exposed to bacteria all the time. It can be a problem if those bacteria are pathogens, which means they cause disease, or if they carry resistance genes. Some types of bacteria actually produce antibiotics in nature. Why would a bacterial cell produce antibiotics? One reason could be that they are produced as a form of biological warfare to eliminate competition of other neighboring bacteria. There's also evidence that antibiotics serve as signaling molecules for communication between bacteria. Bacteria that produce antibiotics also harbor natural resistance to avoid being killed by their own antibiotics. So resistance to antibiotics has likely been around as long as bacteria have. This resistance is usually due to the presence of a gene or a set of genes. We talk about this in detail in the video called Spotlight on Resistance Genes of Clinical Significance in video four. Resistance genes are usually carried on a mobile piece of DNA. Spontaneous mutations can also result in resistance, but we will focus on resistance genes, not these mutations because transfer of these genes is significantly contributing to dangerous levels of resistance that we are seeing worldwide. So resistance genes are transferred among bacteria in two ways, through horizontal or vertical transfer. Vertical gene transfer is the transfer of genetic material from parent to offspring. This only occurs within the same species during sexual or asexual reproduction. In comparison, horizontal gene transfer is the lateral movement between organisms, either of the same or different species and without the need for reproduction. This ability to spread horizontally contributes significantly to the danger of spread. For example, a population of E. coli cells might carry a resistance gene on a plasmid. Through horizontal gene transfer, this plasmid may pass to a salmonella cell. An infection with resistant salmonella cell will be more difficult to treat than one that is sensitive to the antibiotics prescribed. We can't think about antibiotic resistance without understanding the role of natural selection. We will say this a lot in our videos because it is so central to the spread of resistance. You can see a representation of natural selection on the slide. Here we see a population of bacterial cells. The green ones are sensitive to the antibiotic, the red is resistant. If antibiotic is present in the growth environment of the bacteria, the sensitive green cells do not survive, but the single resistant cell can go on to multiply until soon the original population is displaced by an entire population of resistant bacteria. This process of natural selection happens anywhere antibiotics are present. But how do antibiotics enter our environment? This occurs through a number of pathways, which are highlighted by this diagram produced by Natalie Greener at the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute Creative Studio. You can also see many of these pathways at play in the main image on the homepage of the PearSeq website. Discharge of antibiotics from hospitals, homes, and farms gets into the wastewater treatment systems and into natural waterways from runoff. For example, antibiotics have been used in livestock feed since the 1940s, when studies showed that low doses of antibiotics caused the animals to put on more weight. In the US, 
the practice of using antibiotics for growth promotion was banned in 2017, but it is still common in some low and middle income countries. Once consumed by the animal, these antibiotics and resistant bacteria are excreted in fetal matter and spread in soil and water systems surrounding the farm. Antibiotics are still legally used in the US and around the world to treat infections on large scale livestock farms to prevent disease in the crowded conditions. And many of these are the same drugs used to treat humans. Low doses of antibiotics are put into an animal feed to prevent diseases. So unlike in human medicine, antibiotics may be given to all animals, even when they are not sick. This is a huge problem as industrial farming spreads globally. It's not just meat animals that are getting hit with antibiotics. For example, two medically important antibiotics were approved for use in treating a disease that affects citrus trees. Antibiotics are either sprayed on the trees or injected into the tree trunks. Either way, antibiotic residues are spread into the environment and are left on the fruit that we eat and that workers handle. This presence of antibiotics in any environment, including your gut, creates a selective pressure for any bacteria present to maintain resistance to those drugs. Remember this picture of a bacterial cell with a plasmid? Let's take a closer look at that plasmid. Resistance genes often accumulate in clusters on plasmids. The more types of antibiotics present in the environment, the more pressure on a bacterial cell to maintain multiple resistance genes, resulting in multi-drug resistant bacteria. Because bacteria exist everywhere, many environmental locations can serve as reservoirs for resistant bacteria, including waterways, soil, our bodies, and the food we eat. In many places around the world, use of antibiotics is regulated to reduce the spread of resistant bacteria. Regulation tends to be less strict in low and middle income countries where antibiotics are available without prescription and are used widely for growth promotion of animals. We will discuss this in greater detail in video lecture three. With this understanding of the overuse of antibiotics, you can see how any environment in which antibiotics are present leads to emergence of resistant populations of bacteria. We gave an example of overuse in agriculture, but we didn't even talk about many other areas where overuse of antibiotics is a problem, such as unnecessary prescriptions in human and veterinary medicine and dentistry, as well as pharmaceutical pollution. Taken together with the fact that resistance genes are easily spread on plasmids and that plasmids often contain multiple resistance genes, you can see how the problem can get out of hand. One Health is a framework of analyzing health impacts which takes into account the interconnectedness of human, animal, and environmental health and argues that they are inextricably linked. As you can see in this diagram, connections can be made between each of these three components including consumption of contaminated products and farm worker exposure, sewage, and so on. People who live in environments with high levels of antibiotic waste may be at higher risk for infection with resistant bacteria. For example, researchers have found that workers on farms where antibiotics are in high use have more resistant bacteria than non-farm workers. What is the impact from this on their health? Well, these are the areas where we are trying to learn more about as environmental health researchers. This problem is compounded in low-income countries that don't have adequate sanitation and clean water because resistant bacteria can pass from environment to a person via the fecal oral route, the pathway by which bacteria and feces make their way to the mouth of an individual and to their body. Finally, as then apparent from the COVID-19 pandemic, microbes don't respect borders. Because of international travel and transport of goods, resistant bacteria spread very quickly. You'll see an example of this in Lecture 4 Spotlight on Resistance Genes of Clinical Significance, in which the NDM1 resistance gene was spread around the globe in just a few years. In addition, medical tourism is the term for people who travel to other countries to receive medical treatment, often due to reduced prices in that country compared to one's own. A person who acquires resistant bacteria during a hospital stay can spread those resistant bacteria wherever they travel. In basic terms, People travel, food travels, and water systems move bacteria and resistance genes all around the world. Given everything we've talked about today, how can researchers measure levels of resistance genes in the environment? There are lots of things to consider when designing experiments and thinking about analysis of expected results. First is what methods to use. We will address this in more detail in video five titled Tools for Bioinformatics. How do we find a needle in a haystack? 
But briefly, it's important to understand that there are lots of approaches and none can provide results to tell the entire story. For example, what type of samples will you analyze? And what geographic area will you, you focus your collection? All of these choices create limitations that affect how you can interpret your results and whether accurate comparisons can be made between samples or collection sites. For example, how does the number of total bacteria present in a gram of soil compare to that in one liter of water? Comparing different types of environmental samples is complicated by the fact that they have different units of measurement. There's also far more diversity of bacterial species types in soil versus water. How will these differences affect the outcomes you see? Let's recap the lecture too. First, we talked about how bacteria are everywhere and can spread through water and other routes. Then we talked about resistance genes and how they are transferred through horizontal transfer. The spread of antibiotics through the environment from medical, fecal, and pharmaceutical waste promotes the emergence of resistant populations of bacteria. And finally, the relationship between animals, humans, and our environment means that resistant bacteria can spread throughout many environments. The potential impact of this spread on human health is discussed in the next video titled, Why is Antimicrobial Resistance a Public Health Issue? Where we will discuss the global burden of disease and public health significance of antimicrobial resistance. Thank you everyone for joining us.